Good everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the uh, the last episode, right, I talked about uh, different kind of buys you can introduce uh, into your model. Um, so which is not really great, right? Because if you are training um, your model with the bias data, the obviously um, your model gonna get super biased, and when the model gets super biased, uh, you will uh, not get the desired output. Now there are. I'm gonna talk about the uh, you know few different ways you can remove the bias. I don't really wanted to get into the very neat detail uh, nitty gritty aspect of machine learning uh, or deep learning because it's a very uh, detailed uh, concept. And but I just wanted to scratch the surface. That's all I'm trying to uh, do today. Now you might have heard about two topics, uh, two concepts. Sorry, that is called underfitting, ultra underfit, and overfit. Now, underfitting and overfitting, they are the two very common concepts that's used in machine learning. So underfit, um, so in, if, if you think about, uh, let's say you have a model, let's talk about a model, right? Um, so let me, let me put a model here, right? Let's say you, you have a model, right, which you wanted to train, and your data set, what are you training this model with, right? It's not very complex, or, or I would say it's super simple. So it's simple to the point that it's not capable of recognizing different patterns, different signs, different noise uh, in a new, when this model gets exposed to new data. So as a matter of fact, what will happen, uh, like for instance, uh, you know, you train your model with few uh, dog images, right? When the model get exposed to different kind of dogs, it might fail to recognize and say it's a cat. So that kind of model is a kind of an underfit model, right? Where you, your model is not very complex enough. You don't train it, uh, you know, with the, uh, the required amount of data set. And as a matter of fact, right, it just fails to generate the re required output. Now, when it comes to overfit, yeah, so overfit is another problem which you should be worrying about, especially when it comes to training a model. So overfit is like very model is extremely complicated. You trained your model in pretty much every different scenarios. So mean basically means that you trained your model in such a way that it it even uh, take into consideration the noise and extra other stuff. So what will happen when you train a model in entirely different data set? Uh, it kind of struggle with it. So the overfitting and underfitting is a concept uh, which is pretty commonly talked in, in the machine learning space. And it's very important to consider these aspects into equation when you are trying to train your model. So overfitting and underfitting both are bad uh, concept. Uh, and it's, so now where does the bias comes into picture, right? And why are we even talking about the bias? Like I said, right? The bias can be generated based on the data set. You're trying to train your model. Now, uh, one of the thing I've always heard, right? That it's not necessary that you have to, you know, train your model using a very large data set. You can subdivide your data set and then train it. Like for instance, um, uh, you don't really have to, uh, you know, like for instance, if you wanted to cover different diversity, right? You can train using different data set covering individual diversity. That also work, rather than you trying to make one size fit for all. Uh, that could be challenging, uh, right? Rather than you, it's better to um, uh, cut down into or subdivide into different groups and then train it. Now that's is one way you can do that, right? And I believe that, you know, bias can happen. Even you can't make a model 100% unbiased. There might be a scenario where a tiny bit of bias can kick in, and but it's up to the model how you train it. And in other ways is that you train your model and in such a way that you learn, your, you learn from the uh, error or the difference in the output Expect that, like, let's say you're expecting, um, you know, a kind of a, uh, you're expecting a dog, right? And instead it shows the cat. So you can feed that back to the model to retrain it, to train it better, right? 
so that you can evolve your model. So that's one way you can do that. You can retrain your model and based on the output. And this way you will ensure that your model is, is getting trained properly. So that's one way you can do that. Uh, now, one thing I just wanted to mention that generative AI, right, which is the most commonly taught, uh, discussed artificial intelligence uh, uh, in the world at this stage, right? Everyone talks about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is the next best thing everyone talks about, right? But that being said, I do understand that, you know, generative AI is very capable. Generative AI is very, uh, it, it does what it's supposed to do, right? It's, it, it, it helps start the conversation. It, it's, but the, the, there are a few things uh, you should consider when you're using generative AI. One is the safety. Now, uh, especially with the chat GPT, chat um, I, I'm, I can't verify this information, but what I've heard from different sources that they train uh, their um, data using, you know, billions of uh, using the web data, right? And but that also means that there is a very high possibility uh, that when the plagiarism can kick in, because for instance, if I if I ask for certain information, right? Let's say, uh, give me a poetry about X Y Z. It might be possible that it might pick up a, someone else poetry and display that information to you. So there there is a possibility that you know the certain things which you're not supposed to see uh, can be made seen. Uh, can be made visible, right? So that's a security concern. Uh, and though ChatGPT, OpenAI, they said they don't re really train on uh, customer data. They don't retain the data, but <clears throat> that's besides the point of conversation. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that at Salesforce Space, right? Uh, uh, since we're talking from a Salesforce perspective, Salesforce did mention that they don't retain customer data. Uh, and even before they use customer data to train, they seek consent because which is very important. I don't like my data, my personal information should be uh, to be used for, uh, let's say, training some so, someone else model and then without seeking my consent, right? So that's kind of things is very important when you uh, talk about um, using data to train your AI model. Now, one more thing I just wanted to mention in terms of accuracy. You might have seen, right, when you've used ChatGPT, say, for instance, give me a code to do this X, Y, Z. It's, it's not always, uh, it's, it's, it's not the case that it always returns you back with accurate code. It might con contain lots of errors. Sometimes the code don't compile. So, you know, the thing is that the, 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 pre uh, the generative AI can't really verify the authenticity of the response it gives. It gives you ba based on the, uh, the model has been trained on, uh, so which is great. I mean, ChatGPT is pretty close to, you know, uh, what a best AI system can do, uh, which is exposable to uh, general population. Uh, like I said, I'm not talking about the military grade artificial intelligence. They might have different stuff, but from a from what is accessible to a general human population, um, ChatGPT is the next best thing in my opinion so yeah that's one thing you need to consider about the security like i said accuracy um so you can't always rely 100 percent on what the information it provides um so yeah that's uh, that's why you know the salesforce has something called salesforce einstein trust layer uh which is built to the salesforce platform so that they so that the uh, the data accuracy the data integrity and um uh the governance is taken into consideration. And we're going to talk about more about the trust layer. And I, I personally believe that it's important to have the trust layer because obviously, like I said, you shouldn't be training uh, your model using someone's sensitive information and without seeking the consent. So that's because obviously, if you're building a software, right, if you are breaking a trust right from the beginning, the consumers will either get very annoyed, they will sue you, and the third, they won't be interested to have any sort of uh, working business relationship with you. So you are going to risk everything if you are not going to adhere to ethics uh, and integrity and, and, and the right principles, right? So that's why it's very important uh, when you train a model, when you train an AI model, it's important that the training data, what you use, 
should have the right concern in place. What I mean by that is if you're trying to use, a, let's say, for instance, if you wanted to train a model using the demographic information of the user, you should seek the consent from the user that, hey, I'm going to use your data to train it, and my model to predict a certain outcome. And that, and you need to convey to the user the reason why you wanted to use it and, uh, and the expected outcome, right? And how long the data retention will be. Obviously, customers don't like their information to be retained in the system. So, and that's where the GDPR comes into consideration. You cannot retain uh, <clears throat> uh, EU customer information uh, just because you wanted to retain it, right? There are certain compliance that needs to be considered before you even engage in such activities, right? So that's why it's very important that uh, the, the trust is very important. The reason why I'm bringing the trust, because like I said, generated AI model is get trained on the data you provide. And if you wanted to train your model to be accurate, you might obviously need to train with a large data set. I'm not always saying that you have to always use large data set, but the, the, the required amount of the data you need to be using to train it. So the data what you use to be trained should have, should have uh, proper concerns in place or should have proper governance in place, right? So yeah, that's pretty much I wanted to talk about it. We're gonna uh, dwell into security aspect later because I believe it's very important you guys understand, right? Why we're doing it and why it's important to train the model with the right data set. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to convey today, right? Underfit model, overfit model, how to remove the bias and what uh, the security, uh, sorry, the risk associated with generative AI. Yeah, so, that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Monday. Adios.